What is up, hackers? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack all of our Web3 and personal finance education. If you guys are brand new here, there is a short series going on right now on the short section of this channel with side hustles that people have been DMing me about. Thank you so much for the amazing support there. But in this video, I'm going to be going over ThorChain, Thor Wallet, and also Maya Protocol. Now, if that sounds like a foreign language to you, that's okay. We're going to be doing a series here on the channel about it. After all of the events that happened last year with FTX, a couple of big exchanges going down recently, all centralized, I wanted to go through some of the self-custody options out there. I've talked a lot about Shapeshift in the past, but ThorChain and Thor Wallet are incredible new pieces of technology that I wanted to talk about. Now I'm partnering up with the team at Maya as well as Thor Wallet just to do this series because there's a ton of different tokens out there on Thor Wallet and it is a DEX or decentralized exchange. This allows you to fully custody your own assets, earn on those using things like liquidity pools and doing all sorts of cool cross-chain swaps. And if that also sounds kind of like a totally different language, there are a lot of things that I'm going to unpack over the next couple of weeks and months here. But this is the first video to kind of tell you guys that there are options out there to fully own your assets and earn on them as well. First and foremost, let's start with infrastructure. Let's start with ThorChain. It's been around for a long time. It's really governed by a token called Rune, and it is a cross-chain swap infrastructure a really cool and awesome project and run by a company or developed by a company that's called Nine Realms. I've been following Nine Realms for a while. At its core, ThorChain is a settlement layer that allows you to seamlessly swap between protocols. And this includes Bitcoin, Ethereum, Avalanche, Cosmos, and a bunch of other ones. Now it is really operated by its native token, Rune. And this has been around for a very long time. It's ranked on CoinMarketCap, you can see it on there. And this is really what incentivizes people to operate nodes, it incentivizes people to help govern. So what's important to note here is the infrastructure. And that's why I wanted to start with ThorChain because they provide the infrastructure for Trust Wallet. They provide infrastructure for, of course, ThorSwap, which is like the Uniswap of uh, ThorChain. And then they provide the infrastructure for Thor Wallet. Now, Maya Protocol, I'm gonna be talking about in a minute here, but the really cool aspect is that they talk with about providing infrastructure with Shapeshift. I'm a big fan of Eric over there and what they've been doing for many years and really just minimizing the amount of trust needed across all of these different platforms. So starting there at the foundational level with ThorChain is a really important beginning here so that you know that the theme of this is self-custody, seamlessly swap between different blockchains and it's secured by Rune. But now that we've stepped into the sort of Norse way of thinking about things, I wanted to start talking about Thor Wallet. Now Thor Wallet is a DEX that allows you to swap assets and have them on your phone, as well as issues you a free Visa card. And this is a really cool concept around being able to be your own bank and it improvises on top of Thor Chain. The theme here with Thor Wallet as well as Thor Chain is no more wrapped tokens. There is a concept of interoperability where if I send you know, one Ethereum to Avalanche, it will wrap that one Ethereum onto Avalanche. I can operate around on Avalanche and when I send it back, it bridges and it is unwrapped onto Ethereum. They are very much of the camp that they do not want to wrap tokens. They want it to really do a cross-chain interoperability that is seamless and they're taking a unique approach to cross-chain swap. So you have ThorChain, you have your ThorChain wallet on top of that, and that allows you to seamlessly swap and have self-custody over these different assets, because the ThorChain, you have Rune, and then ThorChain wallet, you have a bunch of different assets that you can seamlessly swap on top of ThorChain, and ultimately you can stake. You can create a ability to earn some passive income, and they have a token that is called the TGT token. It's a really cool way of getting people involved on their own token, but also you can earn up to 18% on TGT. Now, this has been around for a long time where people develop their own native tokens and they allow for people to earn passive income. It's very important to know that when you use these percentages in APY, you're referring to that native token. 
It's not like a US dollar account where you're putting US dollars in and it's earning that APY on the US dollars. You're earning that percentage on the token. So it's very important to differentiate that. I get a lot of questions around these crazy APYs. I've talked about staking many, many times. Mining and staking are two different things I've talked about a hundred times on this channel, but there are three different options, the community tiers that the trust wallet has for their TGT token. Standard, where you get your 18%, you get your 1% liquidity fee, where you have no TGT. Then you have staking 35,000 TGT, where you have your 18% APY, you have 0.3% liquidity fee, and you get premium features added onto your wallet. And then you have the Community Plus, which is like an advanced plan where you get 350,000 staked TGT, you unlock 18%, of course, and then 0.1% liquidity fee. So your fee structure goes down as you go up in the amount of tokens that you're holding and staking. And of course you get all of the different features that they have there with missions where you can earn more TGT and all that good stuff. So a lot of fun things go into TGT and Thor wallet that involve you holding their token. This is very similar to the crypto.com CRO token where they were really trying to get people to hold those tokens and they were unlocking all sorts of uh, different features when you were holding a certain amount and you get different fee structures depending on how much you held. Really important part here is knowing that this is an emphasis on being your own bank. They want to bring people into the DeFi ecosystem, have them lending and borrowing and getting access to all of these high yield savings accounts. And it is a very cool concept that they've done here. Now on to Maya. This is the one where I've been talking to the team. I'm really excited to do videos about them in the future. But Maya is taking a really fun themed approach to Norse mythology. And I'm gonna go through each one of the sort of names of the different aspects of how Maya and Thorchain operate together. So if you guys have ever seen anything about Norse mythology, you'll know Thor and you'll know Ragnarok and a lot of these other fun mythology names. So I'm gonna go through the lingo because this helps understand how these things operate. And I really like that that's the theme that they've gone with because people understand it, especially if you know, you've watched anything around Thor over the last few years. We're gonna go through eight of these different mythology names so that you get a better sense for how this works. Let's start with Asgard. In Norse mythology, Asgard is the dwelling world of the gods. In both Maya and Thor chain, Asgard is a reference to the lair where the Bitfrost protocol and the protocol's nodes operate. Midgard, is in Maya and Thorchain, Midgard is the public interface providing data services via an API for end users and platforms. In Norse mythology, Midgard is the world inhabited and known by humans. Bitfrost, the rainbow bridge connecting Asgard and Midgard in the Maya and Thorchain ecosystem, it signifies how the protocol connects to external blockchains and bridges between networks. The Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil is a cosmic tree connecting all nine Norse worlds. In Maya and Thorchain, it's the protocol used to coordinate the churning process where nodes are regularly added or removed. Mimir. Mimir is the wise Norse god known for his knowledge and understanding is used in Maya and Thorchain as the name for the pricing and constant oracle. Mimir offers accurate and timely price information for the ecosystem providing crucial data to its users. Also, I'm gonna be botching a lot of these names, but it is very fun that it can kind of show you that the mythology fits how these things are operating together. Valkyrie. Valkyrie are legendary female figures who decide who lives and dies in battles. In Maya and Thorchain, Valkyrie refers to the protocols that selects and ranks nodes based on their performance. The Einhinger, in Norse, Norse myth, Einhinger are warriors chosen by the Valkyries for their bravery. In Maya and Thorchain, Einhinger represents the active nodes chosen by Valkyrie. And that one's Einherjar. Yeah, Einherjar. Now, Ragnarok. 
is a significant part of Norse mythology. I think we all kind of know Ragnarok, referring it to a prophesized battle leading to the death of several gods, natural disasters, and the world's subsequent rebirth. In context of Maya and Thor chain, the term has been appropriated to symbolize a process wherein all nodes are shut down and funds return to the liquidity priors in the event of an unforeseen and inconvenient event. So that's how the terminology really works, how Maya and Thorchain are working together. And I know I botched a bunch of those names and the different terms, but I think the lingo is really important so people can kind of understand how this works. And the link to this will be below. So for Maya Cacao, is the settlement native token on the blockchain. And this is really cool because the Mayans were using cacao as currency back, you know, hundreds and thousands of years ago. And it is a really cool way of once again, using that terminology to better understand how things work. So cacao is the native token. And then they have the Aztec chain that is the smart contract enabled blockchain here. So Maya allows for these cross chain swaps to happen seamlessly. They are on Thor chain wallet or Thor wallet and the decks there. So you can swap using Thor chain on the wallet and you can swap using Maya soon on the wallet there. So they're partnered with Thor starter as well as the Thor wallet decks. And this really matches with the Norse mytho mythology that we just went through. And it allows people to really connect and have some fun here because that was one of the most important parts to me was that there was a narrative to self custody and to all the different tooling and all the different things that you need when you're developing your own bank, essentially. <laughs> so you have your lending, your borrowing, all these different things and your stable pools, your nodes, your liquidity nodes, your native token, all this, all this is baked in to the terminology. Last, but certainly not least, you have the cacao token that is the native token on Maya's protocol. Uh, and it has three main functions, security. So of course it's getting people incentivized to secure the network. You have liquidity. So you're going to be paired against cacao and you have the you know limited supply. Next, you have the Maya token. Maya token captures 10% of all fees generated by the users swapping inside the protocol. I crammed a ton into this one video here. Why? Because I wanted to give everybody a sense for A, how cool the terminology is to better understand how these things work. Thor Chain has an academy. Maya has a ton of documentation and Thor Wallet has a ton of documentation. So I wanted to cover all three of these first let you guys know I'm going to be doing more videos on this in the future because self custody is so important to me and the ability to leverage new tech like this is really, really cool. And it's fun to play around with. And I'll talk about more over the coming months here, but this is the first of many videos. So I wanted you guys to buckle up, get ready for a series, do some research on these three topics and these three projects. Also nine realms. I'll be linking to that below so you guys can see the developers behind uh, you know, the Thor chain aspect and the backers of a lot of this and shout out to Thor wallet, Maya and the Thor chain community, really excited to be part of the community. And this isn't a sponsored video or anything like that. I am going to be doing some videos that are demos in the future with tokens that have been provided, but I am just teaming up because I think that this is important to share with the world about self-custody. And I've noticed that a lot of projects that are based on the Cosmos SDK are just home runs. They're just people that really understand decentralization and the importance of interoperability and how to do these cross-chain swaps. And it's just a really fun aspect to be talking about Maya and all of the themes. So that is it for this video. Slap a like if you like this and you want to see more about Thor chain and you like the Norse mythology. I think it's awesome, but slap a like on this video and I will see you guys here on the next episode of Hack Crypto.